This is Boybox, our London-based drag king cabaret showcase. I'm Adam All, and I run Boybox with my gorgeous girlfriend, Miss Apple Derrieres. Boybox stage is exclusively for drag kings. We bloody love them. And our audiences are spoiled with a broad and varied spectrum of drag king performances. Boybox was launched in 2013 and has been instrumental in the growth of the drag king scene here in the UK ever since. We have three nights all across London every month and each one is themed which gives the kings a chance to show off what they can do. This series will feature some of our favourite and most regular kings as they pop round mine for a proper chat. So let's hop in the box and see who's on the throne. Welcome to In The Box, we're chatting to Sammy Silver. Hello darling. How are you doing mate? Yeah I'm doing alright, how are you? Good. We'll Good. be better in a minute. Come Fantastic. on. Fantastic. Yes, indeed, indeed. This is what it's all about. Excellent. Cheers, cheers. Mm. Oh my god. Oh, I need a straw. Drag King problems. <laughs> so let's start from the beginning. Yes. Right. So when was Sammy smelted? When did you begin? How did you get into it? Goodness. Right. Okay. So for a very, very short period of time before I became Sammy, I did go by another name. Right. <laughs> I, w- <laughs> I went by the name of Diesel Dyke. Now that was when I. Oh dear. Did you? I really did. And I'm, that makes you cringe, doesn't it? Yeah, I was very young. And that was when I identified, well, a long time ago, because that was when I identified as a butch lesbian, so the name kind of went with it. But I, I went with Sammy Silver, because I don't know, I just like alliteration. That's, that's, yeah. that's sexy, animal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I just get to be Ro- alphabetically first. Exactly. <laughs> a lot. Rolls off the tongue, rolls off the tongue. And I'm Silver, because I'm always second place. Um, Go for the price of silver. Uh, yeah, indeed, indeed, I do yeah. like that intro. I think um, we all like a little bit of, you know, metallic. Yeah, in our lives, nice and hard. Sorry, let's move on. I like your bow tie. Thank you, thank you. And I, I got it's the it's great. shoes in as well. Yeah, that's that's really great. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely that. I'm trying to say, you know, silver. Yeah, just a, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um. Where, yes. did, where did you begin? So you're from Bournemouth, right? I am from Bournemouth, yes. Okay, cool. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so I began, but crazily, I began at university and I was in Bath at the university. And it was a, uh, someone asked me to be part of, for their final third year project, they were putting on a feminist cabaret. And they were like, I know you're interested in drag, I know you do it, how about you come on down? So I thought, I didn't want to be Diesel Dye, because that was when, oh, uh, all the gender stuff was coming up, and I was like, I yeah. know that, that it's a lot more complicated than being just, you know, being a butch lesbian. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just thought I'm going to just invent a new name. Went with Sammy. I like the name Sam, Samuel. Sammy just seemed kind of fun. And uh, yeah, off I went, and I did a song about being bisexual, which I still do quite regularly. You love that song. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Yeah, yeah, it was, I wrote it because it was like, there's a lot of um, interesting things that get said about bisexuality. Yeah. Well, we were going to get to this later, but we can do it. Yeah, okay. I wanted to talk to you about like how far you've come, where you've come, who you are now in comparison to how you were when you started. For sure, for sure. Um, I was, I very much was, uh, when I started, I was very much, Okay, I'm gay. Uh, I'm a gay woman. That's how I saw myself. And I've got to tick all the boxes. I just realised that wasn't that wasn't for me. Twenty four seven. And uh, you know, I just like I like confusing people, and I actually love it. And I you know, like I used to get really offended by it, but I kind of love it when people look at me and like, are you a girl or a boy? And I'm just like, I don't know. Like honestly, that's it. I ask the question I ask myself every day. I feel like it's a uh, you know. People have a to-do list to, every day. They, you know, get the groceries, walk the dog, take the rubbish out. Mine's like have a gender identity crisis. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's what happens. It's on my to-do list for every day. And you know, uh, at first it used to really scare me, but I'm embracing it. And I'm like, I don't know, and I'm embracing the not knowing. That's, Brilliant. That's the beautiful thing. Yeah. Rather not surprisingly, there's a lot of drag kings who have made me feel the same about their gender you know it's it's not it's just a black or... number who are non-binary yeah exactly non-binary you know there's not many of us who are who identify as cis like i think there's a huge range i think we've literally got everyone everything from exactly huge cis, range cis female identity and people to literally cis male identity yeah. people and literally everything in between yeah. everything in between yeah and i think i just ask just okay it's yeah. nice to see such a collective working together and moving forward together as well exactly 
Exactly. I keep talking about working together. But it but is it's genuinely true. happening. It We're is. Both true. doing it to camera. Yeah. Yeah, we made an important point, so we look at. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to near the beginning. So, how yeah. did you end up doing King of the Fringe? I did the classic post uni thing, went off travelling to Canada. Nice. Which was amazing. Loved it. It was great. But I was like, oh yeah, when I go back to when I go back to English soil. I want to I get on this dragging thing, I want to do it. And I heard about King of the Fringe for I'd been following it for like the past year because they did a competition before that. And uh, I thought, right, I'll do this thing. And the competition was literally five days after I got back from Canada. Shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was like, right, I just thought, because really I only had one act. And that was my bisexual song. I thought, okay, I'll just do that. I don't really know what I'm doing. Ah, oh, crazy. I'll just go, I'll just do it. And yeah, it, it, it like it went really well. <laughs> it went well. It went well. <laughs> Somebody went over the crown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, I had this crown on my head. I was like, what? And they had a uh, before we all did our performances. They had a bit of an improv round. <laughs> and oh my god, I just I got really nervous. And I think I fluffed it up completely. And you know, all the other kings were super hilarious. And me, it was just like bring on the cricket noises and, <laughs> and the tumbleweed. And I was like, ah, oh, there was a lot of kings. Uh, in the green room. Yeah, in the green room. Yeah, yeah, in the green room. Yeah, the green room. <laughs> it's like boobs. You look, turn one way. Oh, boobs. Turn another way. Boobs. Yeah. <laughs> Dick. You're really relevant. What are you talking about? <laughs> you were like, yeah, I'm like, oh no, boobs. Oh, oh no, boobs and dick. Oh, so no, what am I gonna do? Can't help it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. So boy box. Boy box. Yes. What's been your favourite experience of Boy Box? Oh my goodness, okay. Memory. I've had many, I've had many. Um, a really special moment for me actually, I really enjoyed Starboy because that was quite a that was quite a significant one for me because that was the first ever lip sync I did. Yes, I remember. Yes, yeah. First ever lip sync I conjured up and you know when as a performer you rehearse something so much you're like give up now this is shit <laughs> go home don't yeah. even bother coming you, you can't and, even see the humor of it yeah yeah it's just like it's i'm done yeah. it's not funny <laughs> everybody's gonna be like sammy you should stick to stick to live vocals because this lip syncing thing you're just not not for it and so i just thought fuck it they're gonna never want me back right <laughs> so i just thought you know what sod it i'll do it fine like whatever um and yeah that was another thing that was like oh a Star Wars sort of spun one of those ones, I think, because it was sci-fi. It landed just when the new Star Wars movie was coming yes, out. Yes, yes. But it also landed... When Bowie, we lost Bowie, Bowie, yeah. Bowie died that week. Yes, yeah. So it was like... Oh, yeah, you know. fuck. It was kind of good timing. Yeah, really good well, timing. Yeah, well, it's colliding. And we decided that thing months before. Yeah, one. yeah. We couldn't Crazy. possibly have known that that Crazy. was going to happen. Yeah. We had loads of Bowie tributes that night yes, as well. Yes, we did. Yeah. That was, good night. It was kind of real, real heartfelt night. Real, yeah. like, real, like, tearjerker. Mm. So tell us about the act that you did for Boy yes. Box Sports Day. Yes, um, I did a tennis act. I had to think of it a day before because I was just procrastinating and I didn't think of it. Procrastinating. So, procrastinating. So procrastinating. Yeah. yeah. After one in the morning, one in the evening. <laughs> so it goes. Um, anyway, uh, I was like, right, let's let's just uh, imagine we're playing a tennis match and think of songs that will go with that tennis match. So it started off with like. Meme. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, it was like Beyonce. Can you handle this? Kelly. Can you handle this? Serena. Can you handle this? 
Sammy, could you get us some strawberries and cream, please? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The hilarious thing was, someone came up to me after I did that act, and they were going, I just did it as a bit of a bit of fun, you know, I like to bring a lot of fun to my acts, why not? I don't really think too much about them, I'm just like, yeah, that's great, I'll just dance around, it'll be great. Um, but someone came up to me going, yeah, I really, like, I really liked how you did that, you as the portraying a male character you you know the female the women just shot you down and like the women came out on top i like you know i liked how you did that and i'm like yeah that's, that's what just was, what happens in life really. that's just what happened the woman that's just what that's comes actual, on top that's just normal that's not like a so you've become a little bit of a, a youtube phenomenon haven't you mr silver well tell us a bit about give us your hashtags give us all your channels to follow okay right follow me king sam silver on youtube and also facebook instagram and twitter of course um, i'm a social media whore love it uh insta i wouldn't have put social social media before that <laughs> just whore or I think that works. Self-professed. I think you should just be proud of it. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. It's a beautiful word. How did it come about? Do you feel? Do you do all the filming yourself? Yes, yeah. So I do all the filming myself. Um, so I, well, I, I've always right back. This is like way back. You know, when I was a teenager, I, I, I've, I always loved YouTube. I love watching it. I love whatever, and it, it helped me a lot through my teenage years, being a queer person because you would go on YouTube and actually there's always queer people who are talking about being queer, and it's like when you're a teenager, you think you're the only one. Yeah. Yeah, who's alive and you're like, no one else is like me, but you go on YouTube, oh, all these other beautiful queer people and you're like, it's okay, you're actually quite normal. Like, So YouTube was quite a saviour for me. And um, So my first video I put on was my non-binary song. Um, I wrote a little song about being non-binary yeah, yeah. and I put that on. That's got, there's nearly at 3,000 views now. Nice. Like, over 100 likes. So that is great. I had no idea it would be so fucking popular, but... <laughs> There it went, and um, a lot of uh, I've had people coming up to me going, "You're you're the king who did the non-binary song at my gig," and it's just that like, is. "Whoa, that that's just really yeah, cool." Yeah, like yeah. when when that happens, oh. you know, I'm like, "Oh, that's cool, that's cool. I'm doing okay." <laughs> yeah, <that's awesome. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's that's really nice. Um, so Sally is is. How does this relate to you? Where does the line yeah, stop? Oh gosh. Who, are you, who are you in relation to that now? Oh gosh. So uh, yeah, I mean. Um, well, I used to go by the name, my legal name, Sally, um, and it was very much Sammy Silver was this character who was the, the more confident, always, always got the girl, always got the, the bloke, whoever I was wanting that night, <laughs> um, and, you know, just egotistical, big head, whatever, ha hella sassy, hella sassy, sexy and surreal. But as I kind of kept on doing it, it's Sammy has become more me and is almost essentially me now and it's Sally has become the character it's, it's very odd it's kind of hard to explain the identity crisis thing happening every day um, but what I see it is now is that actually the character of Sally and the character of Sammy Silver are, are sort of at the ends of the scale so you've got Sally the shy one who you know is a bit of a bumbling fool and then you've got Sammy who's just extravagant out there whatever and the two characters together make me as Sam yeah, yeah, and Sammy and for, for comedy aspects and for the YouTube video they're just great for these two siblings that hate each other and <laughs> <laughs> all, all you need for comedy, just a simple idea and a bit of conflict. Bosh, there you go. There's your comedy <laughs> idea created. That's all you need. Yeah, yeah. Just make, make small notes. <laughs> yeah, make small note, kids. <laughs> um, so you've seen drag over the last how many years you've been doing it now? Oh goodness. Uh, I've, I've, I will say three years now. <coughs> three years performing live, and you've been sort of dallying for about. Dallying. Like, I've been years. flirting with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On and off for a lot. So, what, what's changing for you? There's a lot. I, I feel there's always a lot changing. Always a lot changing. In drag. Yeah, what changes sure. have you seen? What, what do you see? Like, what, what are the changes in the scene? Uh, when I first, when I first started, I found it was very much. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe I feel this because it's how my identity is gone and whatever. Discovering me is who I am and all that. But I found it was actually a lot of people who identified as cis women. And they saw drag king as dressing up as a man, and that was how a drag king was. But I actually, but as it's kind of gone on, it's actually discovering that it's it's not that drag kinging is a performance of 
it's masculinity, it's performance of femininity, it's, it's mixing those two things together and, it, and it's so much more than cis woman playing a man. For the future of drag and the future of everything, not just in drag, not just in that place, what role do you think kings play? I think because now there's a lot more uh, people identifying as the binary and trans on the scene, I feel drag kings are actually becoming quite a big voice for the trans, you know, trans rights. Um, you know, trans equality because uh, unfortunately I think still still the T is forgotten quite a lot in the LGBT and um, uh, yeah, there's still a lot of work to be done. We've come a long way, but there's, there's still work to be done. And, and, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I think we're a big voice for a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, to say just trans is, yeah, is, is wrong. Me, I, know, but, I, yeah, mean, yeah. I know, I mean that there's um, there's been a lull in, in the presence of female body people. Yeah, for sure, for exactly. People, and it, people, and it yeah. feels a little bit like we're sort of stepping forward into, into a position yeah. of um, helping to get more recognition for that side of the scene. Absolutely. Simply absolutely. by mixing with other drag performers who have relatively high profile and saying, hey, look, absolutely, I've got yeah. a couple of people over here who quite happily buy drinks in your bar if you put more, exactly. more exactly. violet on. Yeah, you know, exactly. And and that's kind of exactly. that's actually really beginning to happen, and hopefully, maybe that will see will start to see a, a turnaround in the massively diminishing number of women's bars. Exactly. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. Because like just a couple of years ago, we had five or six in London. Now exactly. We're now two again. Two. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's just, ridiculous. Yeah. I do see there's a lot of venues and a lot of places that are bringing those things together. Absolutely. Yeah. Finding you know yeah. alternative yeah. any kinds of alternative cabaret bringing sure, them all together, sure. which is fab. And we do get sort of lumped into that. And that's great. Yeah. Um, uh, I do think I'm going to stick with boy bands and keep pushing it yeah. forward because yeah. I love the training ground of it, um, but I equally like the sort of the family aspect yeah, of it. Yeah, absolutely. That absolutely. you get that sort of like that is a very a slightly more established king, and then you get the brand new king, yeah. and you get everything in between. People who've done it three or four times, people who've been doing it for three or four months, yeah. people who've been doing it three or four years, yeah. people who've been pushing a decade, yeah, and yeah. they're all in the same room, and they're exactly. all. Just bouncing off each other, and, and, yeah, 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 exactly, and, and, and all learning from each other, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, and having a laugh and being chilled about stuff, yeah. and I think, I think that is vital, and it's been like the fast forward yeah. button on the movement of the drag king. Scene. Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. Boy box has been a big, big, big thing. So well done, well done, you. That was the thing you did. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Boy box, that thing. I don't know. Don't know if you've heard of it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When are your next gigs? What are you what are you doing? What's next for Sunday? Uh So for me, I'll be in Bristol. Okay. I'll be. Oh, I love Bristol. Great place. <laughs> <laughs> Bristol. That's Bristol. Like, Bristol. Yeah. Uh, but I've worked right. They said I think you you perform there. You've definitely performed there. Coochie Crunch. Yes. 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 I've been booked for that for their Christmas show. Great. Which is fabulous. Um, I work with their their team. I did the Bristol Burlesque Festival. And Great. that was the team I work with. Are you going to go dress as a giant bauble? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's always a winner. Silver, it's it? always a winner when you sell. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, and I'm also at Boy Box East. Yay! At the glory, Ooh. Boy Balls. Boy Balls. See, we got it in there. Yeah, so I'm quite excited because I've got a, I've got a few new acts that I'll be throwing on stage. So we'll just see how they go. And Great. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> People like me. You're a busy boy. What, anything else? Anything else coming up? Uh, I am at Kingdom. Yes. Working boy. Yeah, and uh, I've, I've, yeah, I'm trying to do lots of YouTube stuff as well. And uh... fabulous. Yeah. So you've been a busy, 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 yes. busy, ridiculous boy. Yes. So it's literally gold for the price of silver. It is. It is fabulous. Indeed. Well, thanks so much for coming. Yes. Thank you for having me. Well, don't panic. I'm not kicking you out yet. We haven't finished the gin. Okay. <laughs> fabulous. Great. <laughs>